know, it's a common thing that I heard from other trucking companies is that there is a shortage of truck drivers. Yeah, so yeah. this is something that our government is uh, working on with yeah. the Trucking Alliance and others yeah. to create programs to recruit more truck drivers. Yeah, yeah, this is an yeah, issue, yeah, that's, a yeah. common issue that I heard from everywhere. Yeah, well, yeah, th yeah. these days the, the loads got to be precisely delivered and they want them on time. A lot of time, a uh, few highways, uh, whether Highway 11 or Highway 7, uh, cell phones don't work there. So to get the GPS location, mm. to get the cell phones working, it would be nice to have few towers over there. So that's the you know, challenge that we're facing. Uh, fuel costs, that's another big challenge, challenge we're right. facing. Insurance costs, which challenge we're facing. But uh, we're making it through. Well, I'm, look, uh, you guys, your drivers are heroes. Yeah. Over the last two years, when the entire economy was shut down, yeah. people yeah. Uh, didn't know how to respond to, uh, to the pandemic. That's what I did, yeah. Truckers were working day well, in and true. day that's out, true. delivering yeah. goods for Canadians, yeah. looking after each other, looking yeah. after Canadians. And that's I'm really true. here to say thank you to your drivers, yeah. to all of you for doing thank you, thank for you, doing thank what you. Uh, what Canadians needed. Yes. You guys yes. were there. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, we are there. So, there. Our thanks always my drivers, right? To thank the, they're done like last couple of years, like these things, right? Yeah. It was really tough. It's not that easy, right? No. no. no it's tough. No. Right? Yeah. Under and un, under normal circumstances, yeah, your yeah, job is yeah, tough. So yeah, add yeah. a pandemic on top of it, it, more, right, it right, makes yeah, it more tough. Yeah. Well, we, we did have a little tough time with the, with the drivers because you know we have to listen to our drivers, uh, our mechanics, everything else, uh, because they are the frontline workers too. Yep. Uh, whether it comes to va getting the vaccine done, these guys are gone for seven days, four days to get an appointment for them wasn't easy. But it would be nice for them to be counted as frontline workers and do something like that stuff for them. Um, but we made it through. A lot of our drivers are vaccinated. About 90, 95 percent drivers are vaccinated. That's good. That's yeah. good. That's great. That's, That's great. But there, there, there is a sport sometimes we need when there's a comes to be a front life, a front end worker. These are these guys are the front end workers, and to, for them to get a vaccine done, you know, to get an appointment and be there because they can't miss a day. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe in the future we could have a better service for them, giving them a vaccine. Minister, can we ask you why you're not meeting with the truckers in Ottawa? I think it's nice that you're meeting with them today, but what about Ottawa? Uh, I met with truckers everywhere, uh, the protesters in Ottawa. As you know, most all credible trucking organizations have distanced themselves from the protest in Ottawa. I'm meeting with truckers everywhere, virtually, in person. This Today's meeting is part of that effort to continue to hear from truckers, to continue to offer gratitude and support for our truckers. Would you meet with truckers in Toronto if they uh, gather downtown? I meet with truckers at all the time before and after the pandemic uh, i mean i wasn't a minister before the pandemic but my job is to hear all points of view and i will continue to do so what is your message to the truckers in ottawa should they leave um the the protests in ottawa again i want to repeat all trucking organizations have distanced themselves from the protest um the protesters in ottawa have made their point and the entire country heard their point. I think the way we do things in a democratic society is to engage with elected officials, to advocate for policies they care for and to build bridges and dialogues. And I ask for the protesters, now that they've made their point, to go home, engage their elected officials, elected representative, to continue to advocate for their points of view. This is how we do things in Canada. This is how we do things in a democratic society. Well, going on that point, when a train, when a rail line is blockade, when a highway is blockade, when a, a access point to a gas line is blockade, it's met with stiff action and people are arrested and moved away. Why isn't this happening in Ottawa? Look, the law enforcement agencies are responsible for enforcement. transportation lines. The, uh, law enforcement agencies are responsible for enforcing the laws. It's never a good idea for a politician to tell law enforcement agencies how they do their job. Our job is to draft and implement laws and then law enforcement agencies consider the situation and decide how to implement their laws. So I have confidence in our law enforcement agencies to, to do their job. But why do they do it on some transportation lines and not here? And we, the Minister of Transportation. As a politician, it is not a good idea for me to tell police how to do their job, when to do their job. I 
defer to their expertise, to their professionalism to do their job. You mentioned you want to hear both sides. So what are you hearing on their side? you agree with anything they're saying? I think most Canadians are frustrated with the pandemic. Many Canadians are looking forward to the days where we can go back to normalcy. I am one of those people. So we're all, I am sympathetic to those who are frustrated and want to see many measures to be adjusted or eliminated. So, you know, all of us are sympathetic to it. But also I think all Canadians understand that governments and society has to do their best to deal with the pandemic. We have thousands of surgeries that are canceled or postponed. We have tens of thousands of Canadians who lost their lives. We have uh, thousands in our hospitals. We have our frontline healthcare workers struggling with maintaining the flow of patients in hospitals. So all of us need to work together on managing the pandemic to the best of our ability. And we're all looking forward to getting out of the pandemic. And that's why vaccination is a key way of helping our society reduce hospitalization and getting out of the pandemic. They seem to think that they want the mandates removed completely or they're not leaving. Uh, what's your message to them? As I said, there's a way in Canada, in a democratic society, to advocate for your points of view. Uh, during, We just had a federal election. And part, a big part of the federal election was a debate about how to deal with the pandemic. Every member of society had an opportunity to vote for the parties that they wanted and the platform that they wanted. Most Canadians voted for parties and MPs who are advocating for smart public health measures to help us out of the pandemic. That does not mean there's no room for debate. There's always room for debate. But I, you know, the way we do things in Canada is to engage your elected officials, MPP, MLA, MPs, city councillor, to talk about what can be done. So okay. guys, thank, thank, you, you. Th thank you so much for the questions. One of the truckers is very eager to show the minister yeah. his truck. We'll take question. him over. Before the truckers leave, I want to ask you your opinion. What, what do you make of the protest down in Ottawa as a trucker and somebody in the trucking industry? What, what is your position? They have right to do that pro protest it's, it's safely, right? So, uh, not nothing wrong with it. But you know, they they think this is it's not right. But they have right to do that, right? So, but we are my company. We doing like we are a uh, ninety-five percent. We are like uh, vaccine, right? And, we support uh, any and we support any protest that is peaceful. Yeah. Everybody has the right to, right to do that, protest, yeah. but as long as it's peaceful. And also, we like to have the officials come out and talk to them. That's all we want. Um, uh, people want to vaccinate, not vaccinate, they have their own choice. But because of the pandemic, all the situations that are going on, everybody's trying to save each other. They have their view viewpoint. Other uh, politicians have their viewpoint, but uh, it would be good if they would protest and go, go home peacefully. Real concern about Toronto downtown this weekend. What, what is your feeling about what you're hearing inside the trucking industry and what may happen downtown? Um, there's a, it's, it's getting peaceful. So far, whatever Toronto uh, rallies that anybody had, they've, they've been all peaceful. And we hope, we ask them to keep it peaceful. Be peaceful. Be yep. peaceful. Yep. You know, you, you have a point. We live in a country, one of the best countries to live in and work for. And you, you want to raise your point, raise your point, point peacefully. Are you worried that you'll be targeted by this group because you're sort of not really aligned with what they're doing? No, we're aligned with everybody, as long as it's peaceful. The longest peaceful. Everybody has right for their own body if they want the vaccine in or not. But uh, uh, our drivers are 95% are vac vaccinated. If somebody don't want to vaccinate, we can't force them.